So the way Davis does it and the way UCLA does it, there will be two different people from different offices considering permissions to that campus alone. We're not going to contact Davis and say, oh, we want to admit the student, but you know, the students seem to really like Davis because he done some program there or something, or they highlight in their personal statement that they like Davis. So we don't, we're not going to contact them. If the student is competitive and we want to admit them, even though UCLA may not be the first choice, they, we will still admit them. And there is no option in the application where you could choose which campus you are is your first choice, second choice. So I, would, I never recommend that. Some students do put, I, I always smile and say, I love UCLA and that's my first choice. And I like, oh, that's so cute, thank you. But I'm still going to assess the admissions based on their application, not because UCLA is number one. And some students say Berkeley and I don't get it, oh, I hate that, or something like that. Like, automatic, you know, deny. It doesn't work that way. So, but, you know, you want to be thoughtful, you want to show that you know, like, what universities that you have considered, and show, because we want students to be thoughtful. And again, the UC system, the way it's been established is, you know, accessible, especially for the top 12% of California students. Okay? So, um, you know, students in the UC system generally are elite, not just from California, but throughout the world. Okay, let me look at the time. All right, UCLA, please go visit the campus. It's beautiful. Um, if you haven't already been there, the campus tours are free. It's all, all free, available online. Um, here's some highlights of it. I think I'm running out of time, so I'm going to breeze through this. Uh, just one thing I do want to say, is UCLA a great institution? Yes. Is it best? For some, for not for others. Always go to the university that is best for you. University, of, all the UCs are public institution. They are kind of big. As you can see, it's a city within a city. If you include undergrad and graduate students together, there are 40,000 students. On a typical academic year a day, there are 40 to 50,000 people on campus. If you include staff, professors, students, people that are visiting because there's conferences. So it's a very vibrant place. But if you're not used to going to a big place like that, maybe a smaller university or a liberal arts college may be a better fit. If you are, grew up in LA, right? And you're dying to go East Coast, even though your parents are absolutely not, right? But go to the place that maybe you, it, it is a, you're ready to spread your wings, right? I think you could do that plenty, 10 miles away. Uh, but if you really want to get the East Coast experience or somewhere, I don't know, Florida or North Carolina for the hurricane right now. Um, that's up to you, right? So we have our earthquake, we're not perfect either. So emissions rate last year actually was a little higher. Um, so that was kind of a nice thing. I, I feel like a nicer person. Emissions rate, uh, not emissions rate, UCLA historically has, you know, Berkeley and LA is almost tied, but we beat them by a little bit. So my director likes to tell me Anytime we beat Berkeley, just let me mention that. Uh, one of the great things is that UCLA has the highest portfolio graduation rate. So we definitely help students graduate. Great academics, in most cases, is top 25 in the nation, depending on what kind of you know, publication ranks them. Uh, you always get quality education. Uh, athletics is also what we're known for. We have the most uh, championships in NCAA, but there's a lot of Olympians that are represented. I was just recently told that if UCLA was a country by itself, it would be not a fifth in the world and gold medals won the last, I think, 50 years or something like that. So that's pretty cool. Arts, there's a lot of opportunities for galleries, performing arts that you could go to, but also that you could perform at. If you really love some kind of music or if you like acting, that's a good way that, you know, there's opportunities for that. A lot of activities, there's actually, this should be updated, there's over a thousand clubs and organizations that are student run. A lot of opportunities to volunteer and be involved. There's a lot of clubs and organizations. If you're if you want to be in law school, there's a lot of pre med uh, pre law societies. If you want to go go to medical school and be a doctor, that wasn't me. All right, um, is there's a lot of those kind of opportunities and be involved. Uh, you get to travel abroad if you want, and there's financial aid for that. Uh, accommodations. We have very good housing. We're, if you haven't, if you visited the campus the last 
year or so, there's a lot of construction because we're building more places to stay. And the food's pretty good too, I always eat it. Uh, oh, and there it is, good options. Alumni, one of the great things, why do you, why do you go to university? Better opportunities, right? Networking. So you can get the job or go to the school that, graduate school, if you're aspiring for that to go. And UCLA is one of the tops in the nation. There is a cachet for reputation and the four letters, you know. UCLA stands for a lot more than just University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, but again, don't just go for the reputation alone, but go where you feel comfortable and where you feel like you fit. It costs, if this is without financial aid kicking in, it costs about 30000 a little over $30,000 if you live on campus. And um, it has been going up, especially in the fee section, it's called tuition now because of the budget concerns. You know, this year, there's a possibility that UC system as a whole will receive $750 million less uh, than what you should be getting. So obviously those things have been uh, affected the campus, students specifically in the tuition cost, and staff-wise sometimes because uh, we don't get raises for working so hard. So. In, in summary, I'm going to go over this really quick, and some of this I didn't mention, so what are the general, general admissions requirements? I hope you understand in the UC system, it's the GPA, A3G subject courses, and the standardized exams. And again, the better you do, the better your chances. Does UCLA consider letters of recommendation in interview? This is including the UC overall. Most majors do not require it. There are a few, but those are the usually ones that require supplemental application. UCLA Nursing, one of the best in the nation, they do require letters of recommendation. There's only about three majors at UCLA that require letters of recommendation. Most do not. But I know that a lot of the private schools do require, sometimes two or three. So keep those in mind. Wherever you apply to, make sure you know what they're looking for and meet them, because if you don't meet those requirements, and they may be just simple submitting one more paperwork, you may not get the review that you're hoping for, and they might just say, well, the student didn't do everything we asked them to, so we can't review them. You don't want to be in that situation. Do I have to declare a major? You do have to declare a major, but for high school students, undeclared is an option. Transfer students, you have to declare a major, but undeclared, and choose, in most cases, uh, especially, except for the specialized majors like engineering, arts, um, I think nursing, and some of those kind of more specialized majors, it doesn't matter what your major is, it's not going to weigh in the admissions consideration. We just would like you to tell us what you want to be considered or what you want to study because it helps us <laughs> with budgeting. Um, and because students, college students, change a major about 2.5 times, you know, in their college life. Some do more, like me, four times. And some students stick with one, and that's great. Uh, but we know that, you know, the four years in college, or five, or eight, or how long it takes you to get your bachelor's degree, or three, there's definitely students that graduate in three years, um, is that this is the time of growth. And so growth and development means that you're going to discover things that you didn't know about yourself. And then because of that, you may change. So, but in most cases, the major doesn't matter. Especially in the UC system, this is a hint. Just if it's a major under the College of Letters and Science, usually, you know, no matter if biology is not harder to get into than, I don't know, like women's studies, which a lot of people have never heard of sometimes. The competitive level is actually the same. Undeclared is the same as economics. That's how UCLA works, and a lot of the universities work that way too. Okay? Do I, when do I send in my transcripts? We don't request your official transcripts, generally, until you've been admitted. That's the way UCLA does it and a lot of the UCs. But if your university that you're applying to requires official or unofficial, make sure you send it. Do UC campuses decide on admissions together? I hope I make that clear. No. We, you know, if you apply to all nine campuses, you get independent reviews from all nine campuses. So the rumors, I always answer this one because there's always rumors like, oh, if you get into Berkeley, you're not going to get into LA. If you get into LA, Berkeley's not going to admit you. Absolutely not true. Okay, there's plenty of, there's a lot, lot of students at Berkeley and UCLA has admitted, and sometimes we call them and say, come to UCLA. 
Okay? Uh, so please keep that in mind. Uh, so those rumors are not true. So you can spread the word. I say this every year, but I still always hear that rumor. Um, is race, religion, sex, color, ethnicity, and national origin considered in the admission process? No. So Prop 209, there's a state legislation that said we should, we're not, that will not be considered. I know, especially in the Asian community, I'm Korean, my girlfriend's ABC, which I recently learned means American-born Chinese. So that's something I learned here. I was like, whoa. Um, Asians are not at a disadvantage in the admissions review. Okay? It has clearly shown that they're not at a disadvantage. Just straight up statistics-wise, almost 40% of the students at UCLA are Asian. Okay? I think in the United States, in California, I think it's a little over 10%, probably 12 or 13%. So, you, I mean, Asians are very successful at these elite university level. And um, so I do want to reassure you that these things are not in the admissions process. Those three things I mentioned are what's factored in the admissions. Those ac uh, academics, personal statement, personal accomplishments, things you do outside the classroom. Last thing, is the California state budget crisis going to affect admissions? It hasn't yet for California residents. The way we do, we have been, you've been, you may have been reading that we do, we have been a little more active or more, and will be more active in recruiting students outside of states or even international. But what we've committed to is that we're going to admit more of those students to help us cover the cost of the quality of education that we're not going to sacrifice. What we've been doing so far is maintain the number of California residents the same the year before. So the out-of-state international students at UCLA has not taken spots away from California residents. We just, instead of admitting you know, 11,000 students two years ago, we admitted just 12,000 students and we just have more students that decide to come. So that's what we've been doing and that's what the goal of the administration, our leaders are. But if the budget keeps on getting smaller and smaller and smaller, we can't guarantee it. And that's just changes from year to year. It just hasn't been very good. But even in light of that, I think UCs have done exceptionally well. Because overall, especially UCLA, I'm proud to say that we've been very committed. And actually, like this year, we had about 400 students more from California besides come to UCLA than the year before, which puts us in a tougher spot because the $12,000 tuition doesn't cover the California residents' tuition, you know, education. It's more like $20,000. So those extra 400 students came. You know, we're going to call out alumni and other people to help donate money, or maybe we have to admit a few more out-of-state students to balance the cost, and that's what we're doing right now. So we're, again, very committed. Um, I don't know what's going to happen this year or the next year. It may affect more, unfortunately. Uh, we'll see. We don't know yet, but we'll always be committed, and as, as of right now, we've been very, very good. So I have about, oh, I went over, but I'll take a question or two. Is it okay? I don't know. person in charge said I have until 45, but I went over. I must have been really good because you guys have no questions. So thank you for being attentive. I'm gonna be right there, so you can stop by. Don't, I'll be here for a few hours. So if last time I went over there and there were like 50 people, probably, you know, you don't wanna wait that long. Check out the other university and other options as well. Okay, thank you. Enjoy your day.